Hu Yeobang was a high-ranking official of the People's Republic of China. He achieved his most senior status within the Communist Party of China from 1981 to 1987, first as party chairman from 1981 to 1982, then as general secretary of the Communist Party from 1982 to 1987 who joined the Chinese Communist Party in the 1930s, and rose to prominence as a comrade of Deng Xiaoping. During the Cultural Revolution, who was purged, recalled, and purged again, following the political career of Deng. After Deng rose to power, following the death of Mao Zedong, Deng promoted Hu to a series of high political positions. Throughout the 1980s who pursued a series of economic and political reforms under the direction of Deng, whose political and economic reforms made him the enemy of several powerful party elders, who opposed free market reforms and attempts to make China's government more transparent. When widespread student protests occurred across China in 1987, whose political opponents successfully blamed Hu for the disruptions, claiming that Hu's laxness and bourgeois liberalization had either led to or worsened the protests. Hu was forced to resign as party general secretary, but was allowed to retain a seat in the Politburo, whose position as party general secretary was taken by Zhao Ziyang, who continued many of Hu's economic and political reforms. A day after whose death, in 1989, a small-scale demonstration commemorated him and demanded that the government reassess his legacy. A week later, the day before whose funeral, some 100,000 students marched on Tiananmen Square, leading to the Tiananmen Square protests of 1989. Following the government's suppression of the 1989 protests, the Chinese government censored the details of whose life inside mainland China, but it officially rehabilitated his image and lifted its censorship restrictions on the 90th anniversary of whose birth in 2005. Early years Young revolutionary Hu Yeobang's ancestors were hackers from Jiangxi. During the Ming Dynasty they migrated into Hunan, where Hu was born. Hu Yeobang was born into a poor peasant family, and received little formal education. As a child he never attended school, and he taught himself to read. Hu participated in his first rebellion when he was 12, left his family to join the Chinese Communist Party when he was only 14, and became a full member of the party in 1933. During the factional struggles that polarized the CCP during the 1930s, who supported Mao Zedong and opposed the 28 Bolsheviks, who was one of the youngest veterans of the Long March. Once Mao was removed from power, shortly before the beginning of the Fourth Encirclement Campaign, MAO's supporters were persecuted, and Hu Yeobang was sentenced to death. Just before the beginning of the Long March, he and others were on their way to be beheaded. However, a powerful local communist commander named Tan Yubao intervened at the last minute, saving Hu's life. Because of Hu's support of Mao, he was deemed unreliable in order to join the Long March so that he could be placed under surveillance. Hu Yeobang was seriously wounded in the Battle of Mount Lu, near Zunyi close to the area where Mao Zedong rose back to power via the Zuni conference. After Hu was wounded the communist field medic teams chose not to help Hu, and left him in the battlefield to die on the side of the road. Hu was rescued by a childhood friend of his, a Chinese Red Army commander, who happened to pass by. Hu called out his friend's nickname to ask for help and the friend helped him catch up with the retreating main force of the Chinese Red Army and get treatment for his wounds. In 1936, who joined an expeditionary force led by Zhang Guothao. The objective of Zhang's 21,800-plus strong force was to cross the Yellow River, to expand the communist base west of Shaanxi, and to link up with forces from the Soviet Union or with the Xinjiang warlord Sheng Shikai, who was an ally of the communists and the Soviet Union. Zhang Guothao's forces were soundly defeated by the local nationalist Mao warlords, the Mark League. 
Hu Yeo Bang, along with Keen Jivai, became two of the thousands of prisoners of war captured by Mark Leake's forces. Who was one of only 1,500 prisoners of war whom Ma Bufang decided to use as forced labor rather than execute. Ma Bufang sent several Muslim cavalry divisions under General Ma Biao to fight against the Japanese. However, Chiang Kai shek pressured Ma Bufang to contribute even more of his troops to fight Japanese invaders. Ma Bufang decided that, instead of using more of his own troops, he would instead send the 1,500 Chinese Red Army prisoners of war as conscripts. Since the marching route had to pass the border of the communist base in Shaanxi, Hu Yeo Bang and Qin Jivai decided to return to the communists and secretly organized an escape. The escape took place as planned and was a success. Out of the total, 1,500 POWs, more than 1,300 successfully returned to Yunnan. Mao personally welcomed these returning communists, and Hu Yeobang returned to communist forces, where he would remain for rest of his life. After Hu arrived in Yunnan, he attended the anti-Japanese military school. While studying in Yunnan, Hu met and married his wife, Li Zhao, who was also a student in Yunnan. After his training, Hu worked in the political department and was assigned to work as a member of Peng Di Hui's Third Front Army. Hu befriended and worked closely with Deng Xiaoping in the 1930s. In the 1940s, who worked under Deng as the apolitical commissar in the Second Field Army. In the final stages of the Chinese Civil War, who accompanied Deng to Sichuan, and communist forces successfully took control of the province from nationalist forces in 1949. Early PRC politician in 1949, the CCP successfully defeated nationalist forces on mainland China, and the communists founded the People's Republic. In 1952, who accompanied Deng to Beijing, and who became the leader of the Communist Youth League from 1952 to 1966. Hu rose rapidly up the Communist Party hierarchy, until Mao sent Hu to work as First Party Secretary of Shaanxi in 1964, saying, he needs some practical training. Hu may have been assigned to work outside of Beijing because he was judged as being not sufficiently enthusiastic about Maoism. Unlike many of his colleagues, Hu was able to keep his membership within the Party Central Committee until the Ninth Party Congress in April 1969. During the Cultural Revolution, Hu was purged twice and rehabilitated twice, mirroring the political career of Hu's mentor, Deng Xiaoping. In 1969, Hu was recalled to Beijing to be persecuted. Hu became number one among the three Hus, whose names were vilified and who were paraded through Beijing wearing heavy wooden collars around their necks. The other two, Hus, were Hu Keshi, who was the second most Tsai member of the Communist Youth League, and Hu Keeli, who was third most senior in the Communist Youth League and who had also become a close associate of Deng Xiaoping. After being publicly humiliated, Hu was sent to an isolated work camp to participate in reformation through labor under strict security. While in political exile, Hu was forced to work hauling large boulders by hand. When Deng was temporarily recalled to Beijing, from 1973 to 1976, who was also recalled, but, when Deng was purged again, in 1976, who was also purged. After his second purge, who was sent to herd cattle, who was recalled and rehabilitated a second time in 1977, shortly after MAO's death. After he was recalled, he was promoted to directing the party's organizational department, and later directed party propaganda through a department of the Politburo, who was one of the main leaders responsible for reassessing the fates of people who had been persecuted during the Cultural Revolution. According to the Chinese government, who was personally responsible for exonerating over three million people, who tacitly supported the 1978 Democracy Wall protesters, and invited two of the activists to his home in Beijing.
who opposed Hua Guofeng's two-whatevers policy, and was an important supporter of Deng Xiaoping's ascent to power, reformer. Public policies who Yeo Bang's rise to power was engineered by Deng Xiaoping, and who rose to the highest levels of the party after Deng displaced Hua Guofeng as China's paramount leader. In 1980 Hu became party secretary general and was elected to the powerful Politburo Standing Committee. In 1981, Hu became CPC chairman, but helped abolish the position of party chairman in 1982. As part of of a broader effort to distance China from Maoist politics. Most of the chairman's functions were transferred to the post of general secretary, a post taken by Hu. Deng's displacement of Hua Guofeng marks the party leadership's consensus that China should abandon strict Maoist economics in favor of more pragmatic policies, and Hu directed many of Deng's attempts to reform the Chinese economy. By 1982, who was the second most powerful person in China, after Deng. Throughout the last decade of Hu's career, he promoted the role of intellectuals as being fundamental to China's achievement of the four modernizations. During the early 1980s, Deng referred to Hu and Zhao Ziyang as his left and right hands. After advancing to the position of general secretary, who promoted a number of political reforms, often collaborating with Zhao, the ultimate goals of whose reforms were sometimes vaguely defined, who attempted to reform China's political system by requiring candidates to be directly elected in order to enter the Politburo, holding more elections with more than one candidate, increasing government transparency, increasing public consultation before determining party policy, and increasing the degree that government officials could be held directly responsible for their mistakes. During his time in office, who tried to rehabilitate the people who were persecuted during the Cultural Revolution. Many Chinese people think that this was his most important achievement. He was also in favor of a pragmatic policy in Tibet after realizing the mistakes of previous policies. He ordered the withdrawal of thousands of Chinese Han Kadas from the Tibet Autonomous Region following a May 1980 visit to the region, believing that Tibetans should be empowered to administer their own affairs. Han Chinese who remained were required to learn Tibetan. He set out six requirements to improve existing conditions, including the increase of state funds to the autonomous region, improvements in education, and efforts to revive Tibetan culture. At the same time, who stated that anything that is not suited to Tibet's conditions should be rejected or modified. Who made a point of explicitly apologizing to Tibetans for China's misrule of the region during this trip? Who traveled widely throughout his time as general secretary, visiting 1,500 individual districts and villages in order to inspect the work of local officials and to keep in touch with the common people? When he was 65, who retraced the route of the Long March? and took the opportunity to visit and inspect remote military bases located in Tibet, Xinjiang, Yunnan, Qinghai, and Inner Mongolia. Controversial political opinions who was notable for his liberalism and the frank expression of his opinions, which sometimes agitated other senior Chinese leaders. On a trip to Inner Mongolia in 1984, who publicly suggested that Chinese people might start eating in a Western way in order to prevent communicable diseases. He was one of the first Chinese officials to abandon wearing a Mao suit in favor of Western business suits. When asked which of Mao Zedong's theories were desirable for modern China, he replied, I think, none who was not prepared to abandon Marxism completely, but frankly expressed the opinion that communism could not solve all of mankind's problems, who encouraged intellectuals to raise controversial subjects in the media, including democracy, human rights, and the possibility of introducing legal limits to the Communist Party's influence within the Chinese government. Many party elders mistrusted Hu from the start, and eventually grew to fear his influence.
who made sincere efforts to repair Sino-Japanese relations, but was criticized for the scope of his efforts. In 1984, when Beijing recognized the 12th anniversary of Japan's diplomatic recognition of the People's Republic, who invited 3,000 Japanese youth to Beijing, and arranged for them to tour Shanghai, Hangzhou, Nanjing, Wuhan, and Xian, many senior officials considered whose efforts extravagant, since Japan had only invited 500 Chinese youths to Japan the previous year who was criticized internally for the lavish gifts that he gave to visiting Japanese officials, and for allowing his daughter to privately accompany Japanese Prime Minister Nakasone's son when they visited Beijing, who defended his actions by citing the importance of strong Sino-Japanese relations and his belief that the atrocities committed by Japan in China during World War II were the actions of military warlords, and not ordinary citizens, who alienated potential allies within the People's Liberation Army when he suggested for two consecutive years that the Chinese defense budget should be reduced and senior military leaders began to criticize him. Military officials accused Hu of making poor choices when purchasing military hardware from Australia in 1985. When Hu visited Britain, military officials criticized him for drinking soup too loudly during a banquet hosted by Queen Elizabeth II. Zhao and Hu began a large-scale anti-corruption program and permitted the investigations of the children of high-ranking party elders, who had grown up protected by their parents' influence. Hu's investigation of party officials belonging to this Crown Prince party made Hu unpopular with many powerful party officials. After Deng refused to support some of Hu's reforms, who made private comments critical of Deng Xiaoping for his indecisiveness and old-fashioned way of thinking, opinions which Deng eventually became aware of. Resignation In December 1986, a group of students organized public protests across over a dozen cities in support of political and economic liberalization. The protests began in the University of Science and Technology in Hefei, Enwei, where they were led by the controversial astrophysicist Fang Liji, who was then vice-chancellor of the university. Fang talked openly about introducing political reforms which would end the influence of the Communist Party within the Chinese government. The protests were also led by two other radical intellectuals, Wang Ruowang and Lu Binyan. Deng Xiaoping disliked all three leaders, and directed Hu to dismiss them from the party in order to silence them, but Hu refused. In January 1987, after two weeks of student protests demanding greater Western-style freedoms, a clique of party elders and senior military officials forced Hu to resign on the grounds that he had been too lenient with student protesters and for moving too quickly towards free market-style economic reforms. After Hu's dismissal, Deng promoted Zhao Ziyang to replace Hu as party general secretary putting Zhao in a position to succeed Deng as paramount leader, who officially resigned as party general secretary on 16 January, but retained his seat in the Politburo Standing Committee. When Hu resigned, the party forced him to issue a humiliating self-criticism of his mistakes on major issues of political principles in violation of the parties principle of collective leadership. After 1987, who became more reclusive and less active in Chinese politics, studying revolutionary history and practicing his calligraphy in his spare time, and taking long walks for re-exercise. Who was generally viewed as having no real power after 1987, and he was resigned to largely ceremonial roles. Hu's resignation harmed the credibility of the CCP while improving Hu's own. Among Chinese intellectuals who became an example of a man who refused to compromise his convictions in the face of political resistance, and who had paid the price as a result, the promotion of a conservative, Li Peng, 
to the position of Premier after his departure from executive-level positions made the government less enthusiastic to pursue reform, and upset plans of an orderly succession of power from Deng Xiaoping to any politician similar to Hu.